So, hope you guys are all having a blessed day. Um, let's talk bread and living water. So, in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus get, gets led into the desert by the Holy Spirit to be tested by uh, the accuser. Um, and while he's out there in the desert, one of the things that Satan tempts him with is uh, he has stones in his hands. And uh, he's basically like, if you're the son of man, turn these stones into bread because Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry and being tempted you know Jesus told him uh, man shall not eat on bread alone and um, this happens again in the gospel of John with Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman but that, that this time he's talking about living water and this Samaritan woman uh, is actually at the well it's the well is the well of um, Jacob and she's there and she's uh, gathering water and Jesus is thirsty and he's asking her for water and basically he was like if you knew who I was you would be asking me for water living water and they get into a conversation and Jesus went to her and he knew exactly who she was and he knew everything about her and he's asking her questions but he says go get your husband and she says I don't have a husband and he's like you she's like he's like uh, you don't have a husband You've actually had five husbands, and the man that you're living with now, you're not married to. And then she's kind of shocked, and she says, you must be a prophet, and, and then he explains who he is. <clears throat> living water. You know, in this life, to sustain ourselves, we don't just need physical food and water to sustain ourselves as sustenance. We need spiritual food too. And, you know, without that, we could be lost. Just a little part of my testimony is Man, I, I battled I battled anxiety and depression for years. I battled anxiety and depression so bad that I, I was actually terrified of people. I was terrified of, I was terrified of, see, I can't even speak. I was terrified of people to the point where I would take anxiety medicine and I would drink with it to calm my nerves And, it, I, and I ended up overdosing this one time. And I tried suppressing my depression with marijuana and drugs and anything I can get a hold of. And one night it was just too much. I'm mixing pills and, and alcohol. And um, you know, my life got saved that night. And I was never a lot at my friend's uh, parents' house again. But after that, you know, I was still depressed and I still had anxi uh, anxiety because um, I was being attacked mentally and I just couldn't understand life. I couldn't understand life and my purpose in life. I couldn't understand how people could be so rude and heartless and not not even care and just say rude things and without a conscience like without thinking twice and i'm and i'm over here like like 
what, like, I thought I was a pretty decent person, you know, but I still had, I was lifing without, without God, without Jesus in my life. I was lifing. I still thought I was a pretty decent person. I didn't harm anyone. I didn't, you know, I got an occasional fight here and there, but like, <clears throat> um, you know, like pretty much my, that's besides the point. I pushed people away after the whole incident with alcohol and almost killing myself. I tried to suppress my depression and anxiety with, with uh, just, just work, being busy all the time. Being busy all the time. And I would move to a different, I moved to a different location. And I just stayed busy with work, stayed busy with work, stayed busy with work. But I couldn't life couldn't life and I was doing it by my by myself I was I was doing life uh on my own you know and I was trying to fill this void that I had in my heart with lust and drugs and alcohol and you name it you know ecstasy shrooms cocaine you name it I was doing it And um, when I left, when I left uh, California, I had quit doing drugs, and uh, I tried to life for my first time on my own, uh, two uh, two hours from where uh, I I grew up, and uh, I cu I couldn't do it, and uh, I ended up moving to uh, Idaho, and uh, in Idaho I just picked right back up you know I was studying for my CDL and while I was studying for my CDL uh, to drive school bus I was flipping burgers and I would get up at 3 in the morning and I wouldn't get home till like 1130 at night I was given a set of keys to uh, open up a fast food restaurants and flip burgers in between my routes and stuff and and you know it snowed where I was at so I'd have to get out and snow, uh, shovel snow and stuff I just stayed busy and I was suppressing anxiety and depression that it was built up for years years and it didn't need to be that way so by the time I finally came to the end of myself I found a scripture in the Bible and I believe God was giving me scriptures in my feed on on YouTube and stuff when I wasn't watching anything Christian related and these scriptures was, was just show up and then I started listening to the Bible. And then when I finally asked God for help, I found a scripture in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and 8, ask, seek, and knock. And I'm sitting there like, I've always prayed over my food and stuff, but like, I never really, I thought that's just how it was. You live life and then you die and then you meet God, you know, but I didn't have a purpose on this life. I was, I was building houses by this, by this time. And I had a relationship that was I wasn't happy with and uh, I was just sad and depressed and I felt alone I felt alone and I felt like that there was no purpose in my life and I was I got back into drinking um, not hard alcohol but I was drinking almost a 12 pack a night and uh, you know I asked God for help I asked God for help and he showed up he showed up for me, but, uh, in Luke chapter four, Jesus is, um, going and he's reading from a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. And it was actually a prophecy about himself in Isaiah chapter 61 and it says the spirit of the Lord is on me he has chosen me 
to tell good news to the poor. He sent me to tell prisoners that they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly and to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show his kindness. So Jesus came to set us free. He came to set the captives free. Spiritually, mentally, physically, and to heal, you know. And um, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I remember my friend invited me to church and I got baptized. And I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I couldn't remember if I had been baptized when I was a kid or not. I just I just couldn't. And everyone would tell me, if you've been baptized, you would know. Well, I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. You know, and from that point, being born again, you know, I didn't have to life anymore by my on, on my own. I had him there. And all that sin, all the sin I had in my life, you know, trust me, I was a sinner. I sinned. Uh, man. Romans 8.1. Romans 8.1. There's therefore now no condemnations for those who are in Christ. Man, he took all my sin. He took all that sin to the cross. I've never had a friend that would die for me, that would love me as much as he loves me, and I was lifing without him. Talk about a battle. And yes, I had a control issue when I first came to Christ. That was one of the first things we had to work on, was not knowing how to life without having control of my surroundings and stuff and to lay everything down at his feet that was a challenge so in romans eight thirty one, it says so what should we say about this if god is for us no one can stand against us and god is with us you know but i still had a lack of purpose you know, when I came to Christ, I lost my job, I lost my girlfriend, I lost my my house, and I gave it all up. I gave it all up to chase after him and, and find him and to figure out if he was really real, and I found him. The next couple months would be nothing but healing. Healing from all my trauma in my life, all that anxiety and depression. And I asked him, what is my purpose? And he showed me, he showed me in a dream that night of me helping people. It's why there's power in a testimony. People might say, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? I could have said that too. I had a pretty cruddy life up until that point. Why, God, why? It's because your testimony is going to heal other people. And when it heals other people and you're, and you're helping them and you're loving on them, you start to learn how to love yourself. And when you learn how to love yourself, your life changes. There's no more anxiety and there's no more depression. And he gives you peace. Psalms 23, he's your shepherd. He's your shepherd and he's your protector. He's your guide. He leads you to the green pastures and the still waters. That's healing both mentally and physically. You know, man. In Isaiah 41.10. Awesome scripture. It says, don't worry, I am with you. Don't be afraid, I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. Now that's a promise. 
that's a promise and I'm a living testimony to that. I was crushed inside. I was crushed and he has literally picked me up, put me back on my feet, strengthened me. And I put my God first. I do my, yes, I've got a lot of chores and I've got a lot of things I've got to do in my life right now. I help out the best I can at someone else's house, but he's given me a moment in my life where I can put him first and read the scripture and learn what kingdom life is, my, my, my identity, the promises, and just learn about my Lord and Savior, who God is, who his son is, you know, and who the Holy Spirit is. You don't have to life by yourself. You don't have to be depressed and you don't have to have anxiety. That is, that is a lie. That is a lie straight from the pits of hell, you know. For the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7. I'm going to end that right there. I recommend reading Psalms 23, verse 1 to 6. Very short psalms, and it'll tell you from the perspective of a sheep who God is. Who God is. Anyways, I hope this was a blessing. All glory be to God. He loves every one of us, and he's waiting for us to answer his call. And you don't have to life anymore, and you don't have to be afraid, and you don't have to have depression. I love you. Peace out.